Hi, you guys. Uh, it's Crystal Hill again. Today, I uh, wanted to do a video about love. Um, the title of this video is just because they show you that they love you don't mean that they are in love with you. And um, today I want to really talk about the word love because the word love has um, for sure two different meanings. And see, words are tricky because words are very dangerous vehicles to convey ideas because they're simply symbols. And they point to a common meaning, and we all have to agree upon the meaning. Uh, but there are some words that have been used so much that they have become watered down, and they have many different meanings. And love is one of those words. In the same way that if I say, you know, I love God, uh, we have to agree on what do I mean by God. And so many people have different conceptions of God um, most times we assume that their God, when they say God, they mean what we mean, and it's not the case. And so in this video, I want to talk about the word love and what does it mean when someone say that they love you? And what do you mean when you say that you love yourself? Because as I just said, there are two different meanings and they actually have a world of difference between them. And so really knowing the two different types of love, you can begin to um, understand what a person means when they say they love you. And so you can position yourself properly um, because one form of love uh, is, is a destructive form in reality. And it can turn around to bite you in your ass if you think that they're talking about the other form, which is unconditional. So, um, hi, Saba L. Hi, King Steve. How are all y'all doing this, this morning? I know y'all don't like the word morning, but... For the sake of convenience. Grand rising, everyone. Um, so, what is love? What is love? When we say we love someone or something, what do we mean? Um, now, I read this post a while back about, uh, f they called it fish love. And, and what they were saying was, we say we love fish, but right after we say that, we take the fish out of its natural environment, we uh, skin it, fry it, and eat it, and the fish is no more. So we really need to ask ourselves, when people say they love you, do they have that fish love for you? And a lot of times we get in relationships with people that say that they love us, and we don't know that they're talking about that fish love. And so, you 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 know, things happen in the relationship that one day, you know, sometimes it happens that one day they wake up and say they don't love you anymore. And so you're crushed by that because you wonder, how can you love me at one point and not love me at another? Or there are some people who are in relationships with other people that are saying that they love them, but yet these people are degrading them and, and uh, whipping their ass and uh, cheating and, you know, doing all kinds of other different things that don't quite add up with what we consider love to be. And so we find ourselves in this situation where love is getting a bad rep because of this counterfeit version of love that has the same name but is running around. It's the same way like uh, right now in the world, the United States Corporation is a fictional entity, but it has the same name as the beautiful North American continent. But the North American continent is getting a bad rep because of this United States Corporation. Same thing. It's identity theft. So... Let's talk about the lesser form of love. And I, I want to kind of give you some ideas of how that lesser form of love manifests itself so you can be able to, um, to decide what kind of love you're dealing with when you're dealing with people. So there is a, a difference between loving someone and being in love with someone. When you love someone, that is a verb. Love is a verb. A verb is action. There's some type of movement that must happen. Now, when you're in love with someone, that is a noun. A noun is a person, place, or thing. Being in love denotes that you like you're in a box or you're in a car or you're in the pool. You're literally in a state 
of love. Now, the lesser form of love, which is the verb, shows action. Okay. Now, this is a little difficult to articulate, so give me a little moment to gather my, uh, you know, to get my, my thoughts in order. But the lesser form of love is an action. And more properly, it shouldn't actually even be called love. That's what gets us confused because we're calling it love. And it technically is more properly called desire. A lot of times when people say they love you, what they mean to say is they desire you. Now, desire is a funny thing because desire is the front side and the front always has a back side. There's a back side to desire. This is that kind of love where a person says they love you and they can turn around and uh, beat you up by the afternoon. Okay. Or uh, be, be with another woman or another man. Uh, this afternoon after they've told you they love you. That's because it's, it's not technically love. It's really desire is what they have for you. And we need to begin to understand that a lot of relationships are more like business deals. Um, and we don't see it that way, but that's exactly what it is. When someone desires you, I want you to know that there is a selfish motive somewhere behind that. Somewhere behind that. A lot of times people will have... Uh, a set role in their head, uh, especially when speaking of uh, sexual or romantic type relationships, they will have a set role in their head and they're simply looking for somebody who fits the criteria to play that role. And you fit that criteria and therefore they desire you for the role. They love you for the role. And so if in the event that you change in some way in which you no longer fit the role that they're looking for, they no longer desire you. So they tell you that they don't love you anymore. But that's not love. That's desire. And you see desire. That's why they, that song was called fire and desire, because desire is like fire. It can burn and it can create a state of hell within you. And that is not love. It's not love. You see, it's the same way with the fish. We say we love the fish, but what we really, really mean to say is we desire the fish. For what? That's the next logical question. For what? So once you've determined that when someone says that they love you, that what they really mean is they desire you, the next question you need to ask is for what? You see, we love the fish because we want to eat it. Now, if we told the fish we love the fish and it knew that that meant it was going to get eaten, then it wouldn't be sticking around. And a lot of us have gotten eaten in our relationships with other people because we didn't realize that when they said that they love us, they meant they wanted to destroy us by their desire. They wanted to use us up for their purpose. They desired us for a purpose. You know, you will even even on the workplace, you'll have superiors and bosses and, and, and managers who say they love you. I love you. I love your work. What do they mean when they say they love you? They love your work. That means that they desire your work. They desire you. Why? To use you up. That does not mean. That they accept you in any type of way, shape, or form. That just means that they have a role that they need filled and you fit the criteria. But the moment, even on the workplace, the moment you stop working in the way that they desire, they no longer love you. That's what they call that limited love. It's, it's really fake love. It's not technically love at all, but it has the same name as love so as to confuse you. And we are getting very, very confused. Let me see some of these uh, comments here. Hi, Diamond Nicole. Austinaco. Austinaco. Good to see you. LeGerald. Jason Matthews. Sabael. Glad to see all y'all tuning in. Saba L says, this is high science made simple and plain, but highly overlooked and underrated. That is correct. 
Desire is not love. Desire can burn and create a sense of hell inside of you. Mm-hmm. Not desiring love. Yes. Yes. And, and you know, it, it is so very important. It's so very important because, um, you know, men as well, but especially women. I know a lot of women are in um, mentally abusive relationships, physically abusive relationships, financially abusive relationships. And this can go for all of us and not just romantic relationships. You could have abusive relationships between, um, you know, a mother and a child um, that is simply based on desire. Not only that, but even more important than your relationship with others is your relationship with yourself. How, what kind of love do you have for yourself is the question. Do you have that love, which is, is really that fish love, that desire kind of love? Or do you love yourself only for your purposes? I know that sounds strange, but really think about it. A lot of us only love ourselves when we are doing things that please ourselves, the moment we do something that we deem unpleasing to ourselves, we no longer love ourselves. I hate myself. You throw a pity party. You want to die. You don't know why nobody loves you. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So our love, even for ourselves, isn't really pure love, because if it was, then we wouldn't. Uh, we wouldn't be so easy to not love ourselves because we've done something wrong. And, you know, <coughs> along those lines, I want you to notice that your your the the things that you do, the things that you say and the things that you think have a lot less to do with you than you actually believe. Have you ever done something and you went back and said to yourself when you replayed it in your head, you was like, damn. What was I thinking? What was I doing? It was almost as if you was an autopilot and you couldn't stop yourself. Have you ever got so mad that you've done some things and it was as if you, someone was doing it and it wasn't you? Have you ever had that happen to you? Well, I want you to know that there is really um, a big difference between you and yourself. You know, like the movie Me, Myself and I. Your thoughts, words, and your actions actually uh, happen without you. You, as a being, are actually the observer of the thoughts, actions, and words. And so we, as observers of ourselves, judge ourselves often. And we don't like ourselves if we notice that ourselves are doing things that is opposite to what we have judged right and what we have judged wrong and what we want to be. You know, even if you if you as a observer of life wants to be a, a better being and you catch yourself doing things that are not in line with that ideology, you begin to not like yourself anymore. And I want you to know that is because you never did technically love yourself. Because once you truly love yourself, you cannot unlove yourself. So you are deluded in your own thinking that you love yourself and you don't. You desire yourself for a particular purpose. You desire yourself because you want to uh, be comfortable or because you want to uh, attain love or different things. You're using yourself as a vehicle to get shit for you. And when it does not do it the way you want it to be done, you come down on yourself. And that is not love. You're not loving yourself. And the same thing with a spouse or like I said, it could be even between a parent and child. It could be between neighbors. What kind of love are you getting and what kind of love are you giving? Is it that fish love? Now, notice, I want you to notice that that kind of love is the front side. The back side of that is fear. It's always fear. Desire cannot exist without fear. I want y'all to really grasp this. There are two emotions. Emotions. E being energy and energy in motion. That's what your emotions are. Energy in motion. Your emotions is 
causes you to have motions. Your motions are dependent on your emotions. You see, motions are the effect. Your emotions are the causes. And there's only two. There's only two. There's love, or what they erroneously call love, and there is fear. But it's properly called desire and fear. You see, desire is like a magnet. That's why a person will say, I am attracted to you. Because desire is like a magnet. It, it, it pulls you towards that, that object of the desire. Now, fear is like turning the magnet on the, on the opposite side. You ever turn the magnet on the opposite side and you'll notice the closer you put the magnet to the other magnet, it scoots across the floor. It always maintains a distance between itself and, and the other magnet. It will never touch it will never touch. And that's what fear is. Fear is a repulsive um, force. So when you fear something, you have a tendency to move away from it. But when you desire something, you're like a magnet and you have a tendency to be attracted to it. So when somebody says they're attracted to you, that means they desire you. So there's fear and there's love. But any time that you see that somebody loves you in a love that's actually desire, I want you to know that there is fear somewhere lurking in their heart. What do you mean by that? I'll tell you. If I say that I love life, then that automatically means that I fear death. Love or excuse me, desire and fear go hand in hand. If you love one thing, you fear its opposite. So if I say I love the sunshine, then that means I have a fear of the nighttime, of darkness. If I say I love knowledge, then that means I fear ignorance. And again, fear is a repulsive agent, meaning I am not attracted to, to, to ignorance. I am attracted to knowledge. I am repulsed by ignorance. I want to get as far away from ignorance as I possibly can. Okay? So anytime that you desire something, you fear something at the same time. So if a person desires you, the more you desire a person, you ever notice you automatically get this fear of losing them at the same time? You ever notice that? It's like a bittersweet. Even when you have them with you, it's like the more you love them, the more you fear losing them. And so in a lot of relationships, you will find that people will act out of that fear. You will see them doing things out of that fear. That's, that's, that's how it's manifested, what they call jealousy. You ever been with a person who is constantly going through your phone, um, watching your eyeballs to see who all you're looking at? I mean, it becomes a hell. It becomes a hellish kind of state because you you begin to to uh, operate in that fear of losing that person because and, you, and, and with fear and this type of love, I want you to notice another thing. The stronger the love is, the stronger the fear is. However strong the love is, the fear will be just as strong as that love. So when a person says they love you in that desire kind of love, I want you to know that if they love you a whole lot, then they have a whole lot of fear backed behind that. These are those people that will kill you and say some shit like, if I can't have you, nobody can, or I couldn't live without you kind of shit. And that, my friend, is not love. People say love hurts. No, no, no. Love does not hurt. Desire hurts. Desire is just like fire. Your ass will burn up in the flames, especially if you don't get the object of your desire. Yeah, that's right. So you have to be very suspicious of those people who desire you. 
be very suspicious of people who desire you. The first thing you need to do is figure out what do they desire you for? For what purpose? Do they desire you because they fear being alone and they want to be with someone? Because if that's the case, you could be easily replaced. Long as someone is there, it doesn't matter exactly who it is. It just happens to be you right now. Do they desire you because you have a nice figure and a beautiful face and they like looking at you? Hmm? Do they desire you because you give them some sexual feeling on the inside and they like that feeling? It gives them a sense of life. Because if that's why they desire you, no wonder they're cheating. Because that is nothing particular about you. I mean, there are other people with nice bodies and pretty faces. Hmm? Or you thought it was just yours? Hmm. Yes. Do they love you because they want the security? Hmm? Is it do you got a good job and 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 you know they know that you will go get her and you will work her and so they desire you because they really desire that security because they fear not having things in life or being a bottom feeder or being looked at in a certain type of way is that why they desire you hmm? you need to really understand what is your purpose for loving me? What is your purpose for desiring me? Do they desire you because they, they like having someone to control? Hmm? Could that be it? They fear being inferior, so they must have someone there inferior to them. In order to feel superior and you're fulfilling that role for them. Hmm? Even parents do this. There are a lot of parents who have children because they know that the children will love them no matter what. You ever heard parents say that? I'm so happy I'm having this baby because I know that this baby will love me no matter what. So the baby is coming to the world already with a debt to pay. The baby's got a debt to pay before it's even born. Now it's got to make sure that it, it gives its mother unconditional love because that is the purpose mother had the baby. It has nothing to do with the baby itself. So when mama says she loved the baby, what she really means to say is I desire the baby because I desire love and I think this baby can give me that. But what happens, what happens in that parent-child relationship when the child comes out and he shows some type of disapproval of the parent? Or he shows what the parent may perceive as unloving actions. Then you notice the parent no longer wants that child. You notice that? The parent disowns the child. Fuck you, get out of my house, I don't want to talk to you, don't answer the phone, and everything else. And some kids out there right now, the grown ass adults out here right now don't understand why mama don't love me. That's because mama never did. Mama desired you for her own selfish agenda. Mama desired you to fulfill a hole within herself. But mama technically never loved you. Now, let me explain to you what real love is. And we'll go back. I'll explain to you what real love is. Real love is summed up in one word. Acceptance. Acceptance. It's the thing that everyone desires. You know, people say, I love love. And that's what they mean. I desire to be accepted. I desire to be accepted. Because real love is acceptance. You see, desire uh, separates. It separates. It divides. If I desire light, that means I don't desire darkness. If I desire life, that means I do not desire death. If I desire food, that means I do not desire starving or going hungry. You see, so it divides. 
It divides the yin from the yang. It says, I like yin, but I don't really want to deal with yang. Acceptance is the opposite. You see, when you accept something, you accept it for itself as it is. That is true love. See, when you accept life, when you accept life, you also accept death because death is a part of life. In the same way, yin is a part of yang. See, when someone accepts you, they, 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 you don't have to worry about them not accepting you because of something you do or say. Because they accept your good and your bad. In the same way that people love nature, people love nature in a proper way for the most part. They love nature meaning they accept nature for what it is. They love the flowers, but they also accept the storms and the rain. They enjoy the sunny days, but they also enjoy the not so sunny days. Yes. And when a parent truly loves a child in the love that is acceptance, then no matter what that child does, whether that child loves them or not, they continue to love their child. Because they are not loving from desire, they're loving from acceptance. You see, so desire is a conditional love. And it has a tendency to produce hate. But acceptance is a unconditional love. And it can produce nothing but more love and more acceptance. You see, the opposite of acceptance is rejection which is hate. So in emotional terms, there's fear and there's love, which is truly desire. But in a state of being, there is love, which is acceptance, and there is hate, which is rejection. Any time that you reject someone or something, it is because of your fear, which is linked to, to desire. And here we have in the scripture where it says perfect love cast out fear. So when it says that it is not talking about the love that is desire. It is talking about the love that is acceptance. Because perfect acceptance cast out any type of repulsion. In the same way that a mother who truly accepts and loves her child. He can shoot up 20 people. And she will still not be repulsed by her child. She may be repulsed by his actions, but she will still love her child. He will still love his child. And so you see there are parents who have children who are homosexuals or who are um, living or strippers or doing some type of lifestyle that the parent does not agree with. And so they disown the child. Why? Why? If you love me, then why does that matter? And I'll tell you why. Because those are the parents who love the child as long as the child are fulfilling their agenda. Their desire for the child was so that everybody can say, look how good of a job you've done. Their desire for the child is for the child to be everything that they never was. Their desire for the child is something other than acceptance. And so when the child no longer fits the role that they want the child to play, then the love is gone because the fear has taken its place. Fear has taken its place because any time that you have the desire kind of love, the fear is also there. But perfect love casts out fear. And perfect love is acceptance. So when you accept your children, your spouse, your neighbor, life, yourself as you truly are, then no matter what yourself do or say, no matter what your child do or say, no matter what your spouse do or say, no matter what is done or said in life, you continue to accept it. You see, when a person says they love flowers and you see them pick the flower up and put it in a vase and put it on their table, that person does not love that flower. 
because they know in the natural process that that flower will die on that table. And that, my friend, is not love. How can you kill that which you love? How can you beat that which you love? How can you cheat on that which you love? How can you disown that which you love? How can you hurt that which you love? How can you destroy that which you love? And that's because you don't really love it. Because if you truly loved flowers, you would leave it be in its natural environment and let it grow out its natural life. (laughs) You would leave it there so somebody else could enjoy its beauty. But you don't love the flower. You desire the flower. Mm Mm-hmm. You desire the flower. And that's why you could pick the flower up, knowing that the flower will die because you don't give a damn about the flower. You desire the flower for the ecstatic beauty that it gives you because it gives you a good feeling to see the flower sitting on your table when you pass by it. No, you don't love the flower. You love yourself. And the flower is going to be sacrificed so it can play your role. Mm Mm-hmm. They killed the flowers they say they love. That's right, Mr. Bay. And people kill people that they say that they love. People hurt people that they say that they love. And love gets the bad rep for people who don't truly love. And so there are people who are closing their self off to love because they think love hurts. But it's not love that hurts. It is desire that hurts. Desire is like a bottomless pit. It is continuously eating, but it is never full. Because if you love flowers, the flower that's on your table will die. That means you got to go out and pick another flower. And it's a continual cycle of death. Mm Mm-hmm. You said you love that woman, but she she got fat on you and you didn't love her no more or or she began to get knowledgeable and began to love herself. And so you couldn't talk to her how you wanted to talk to her. You couldn't control her or him how you want to control her or him. And so you didn't love him no more. And now you got somebody else to control and the cycle will continue. Damage, damage, damage. And we're blaming it on love. We're blaming it on love. But see, when you're in love, that's why they say in love, because it's just like you fall in a pool of water. It's a difference between drinking a glass of water and being in a pool of water. Mm -hmm. When you drink a glass of water, it's equivalent to saying, I love you. But when you're in the water, that is like being in love. And there's no destruction that comes with that kind of love. When you accept someone, you don't necessarily have to possess them when you truly love someone. And those are the best relationships, not the ones where I feel like I can own you or you can own me. That's not love. If you want to own the flower, that's not love. If you want to change the flower in any way, that's not love. And so when you're with your spouse and you continuously want your spouse to change and do something different and be something different, that's technically not love. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with wanting your spouse to be better. That is not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that's not love. I am defining the term. And it is not because true love is acceptance. It means, baby, I love you even though you snore loud. I love you even though you may not be as intelligent. I love you even though you may not have the job I want you to have and make the money I want you to have. That means I love you in the good times and the bad. That's what that means. That, that means I don't have a specific role for you to fill. That means I love you because you are you. Whether you are in my life actively or not. 
I will still accept you. And the same thing with children. Whether you are a homosexual or not. I love you because you are my child. I accept you. Whether you are with that woman or with that man that I don't want you to be with or not. I will love you and accept you. Simply because of who you are. Because you are my child. Whether you kill up 20 people or not. I will love you. I will accept you simply because of who you are, which is my child. And so when you find, when you find that you are loving yourself based off of what yourself has gained for you. Because yourself has gotten, has articulated words and presented itself so well that people love you. Because of what yourself has done. And now you love yourself because of that. But when yourself no longer gets the love that you need. When yourself no longer can get the job that you want. The finances that you want. You no longer love yourself. Well my friend that's not love. You need to understand that you are perfect. Exactly the way you are right now. Accept yourself for who you are, whatever that may be, because I want you to know that until you love yourself, you cannot expect anyone else to love you. It will not and cannot happen. It's physics. I'm not going into that. But I'm telling you, it is a physics law. Just like if you jump off a cliff, you will fall and die. That is a law of physics. And if you do not accept yourself, the yin and the yang of you, then do not expect nobody else to. And just expect that you, for you to live the rest of your life in the most unauthentic, inorganic way. That's right. And you will experience hell. Until you learn to truly love yourself. Not that fake counterfeit shit because the fake always falls off. I'm talking about real love here. I'm talking about that unconditional infinite love. That love that takes your yin and your yang, your higher and your lower self, whatever parts of you, it's taken it. And it accepts it for what it is. And you will be surprised that once you truly accept yourself, you will be able to make those necessary changes. If there are some changes that needs to be made, the kinks will iron themselves out. But you cannot come from an unloving, an unloving foundation and expect to build a house upon it because you're building your house on the wrong foundation. And it will fall at some point. If you are having children because you have a role that you have preconditioned your children to fill before they even got here, you are setting your children up for failure. And if they become a failure in your eyes, it is nobody's fault but yours. If you plan to have children, you need to plan to have children for the sake of. Of the children. Not for the sake of fulfilling your role. Your agenda. Or for them to be what you want them to be. But you need to be able to accept the child. And whatever they are going to be. You need to count up the cost. Go through all the possibilities in your head. Of what could, should or maybe happen. But if you are having children so they can love you. You are starting from the wrong foundation. If you are getting with a man or a woman because you feel you need love, you are getting with them from the wrong foundation. And it is doomed to fail. It is doomed to fail. If you are looking at a person and you see things in them that you like for your purposes, don't marry them. 
until you can see the person in their fullness, their good and their bad, in all of their dirty, look between the lines, read behind the words of their mouth, and look at their actions. Thoroughly know what you're dealing with. And then accept that person. And from that foundation of acceptance, which is true love, then you can build a relationship. And when the rains come and when the storms come, the house will not fall. But because you got in that relationship from the wrong foundation, because you wanted him or her to love you. But you didn't specify how you wanted him or her to love you. And now they're not loving you in a way that you think is good. And so you don't love them anymore. That's because you never did. It's because you never did. And so I think it is very imperative that we be aware that love even though we use the word so often that love has many different meanings. And when you're dealing with people, you need to look past the words and go to the meaning of what they're saying. When they say they love you, do they mean that they desire you to fulfill a role? Or do that mean that they accept you? Because if they love you in a way that they desire you to fulfill a role, I want you to imagine that flower on the roadside. And I want you to know that that flower is you. A lot of y'all right now have been picked from your natural environment and you are sitting on somebody's pedestal dying. Dying right now. And they're telling you, that they love you and you don't understand, well, why do I feel like I'm dying? Why does this not feel like love? Why you keep putting your hands on me? Why you keep putting me down? Well, why can't you love my family if you love me? If you love the apple, surely you love the tree, right? Why must I be a heterosexual for you to love me? Why? Does these things matter? Why? I want you to know that you are just like that flower. And these people don't really love you. So it is okay. It is okay for you to release yourself from these people. I don't give a damn if they is your family. I don't give a damn if you've been with him or her for 20, 30 years. I do not care what the circumstance may be. When you begin to love yourself, then you will know that it is okay to release those people from you because they never truly loved you in the first place. And all they can do is bring hell in your life. It is okay. I want you to know that. Cut yourself from them until they can learn to truly love you for who you are. Which remains, which will keep you with your life intact, which will keep your soul intact, which will keep your feelings intact. Until they can love you in that way, all they will do is hurt your feelings. All they will do is try to control you. All they will do is try to get you to fulfill their will and not your will. All they will do is be a burden to your life. And will cause you to hate yourself. Hate as in reject. You will reject yourself. And it is a terrible thing to reject something that you technically cannot reject. Because you will be with yourself till you die. 24 hours a day. Seven days a week. Have you ever been in a house with someone that you can't stand? Have you ever spent some time in the house with a person that you cannot stand? Have you ever worked on a job with a person that you cannot stand? Those eight hours are unbearable. Those moments when you're in that house feels like you're suffocating. Now, if you can, if you can imagine how it feels to be in a home with someone that you can't stand, to be working on a job with someone that you can't stand, can you imagine how it feels to be living in a body with a self that you cannot stand? And you wonder why people kill themselves. They trying to get away from their self. That's why. 
I will be dead before I spend the rest of my life with this motherfucker talking about self. Talking about self. Why? Because they have not accepted their self. You know how many people there is in the world who have never seen real love? Who have never truly been accepted for who they are, period. Whatever the fuck that may be. You see, we don't mind truly loving an animal. We can accept a dog even though it shits on the floor. Even though it might have ate up the leg of your couch. Even though it might have bit your little daughter's finger. We accept that from the dog because we understand that is the dog's nature. And we do not hold that to the dog's account. So we can love a dog in the true sense of the word love. We don't have a role for the dog technically to fulfill. We don't think it has consciousness to fulfill a role. So we love, we accept the dog for what the fuck it is. Good, bad, or indifference. We know that that is the dog's nature. We cool with that. But we cannot accept our own children and our own spouses and our own people and our own neighbors. But you can accept the dog. You you see, we accept weather in the true sense of the word. When the sun is shining, we have a wonderful day. It's nice and beautiful. And even when the sun is not shining on rainy days, we're okay with that. We don't hate nature because of that. Because we understand that that is the nature of nature. So we can accept weather, but we can't accept our own children, our own spouses, our own people, our own fucking selves. Hmm. But we don't see nothing wrong with this. That is because we don't actually stop and think. We don't stop and think. And that's why I'm doing this video, because I want you to begin to listen and look and learn. Because nine times out of ten, you have been loving yourself the wrong way. But you keep saying, I love myself. Still, you're dying on the inside and you don't understand. But I love myself. Things are supposed to be better. But you're loving yourself the wrong way. With the wrong kind of love. So you need to take a good look around you today. Take a good look around you and ask yourself, start with the most prominent people in your life and ask yourself, how do they love me? What kind of love do they have for me? And you need to make a mental note of the people who love you with the unconditional proper kind of love, with the love that is accepting. And again, I will say this, you do not have to to accept everyone's actions to accept them because actions are based on a lot of variables if you begin to talk to people and begin to understand the story of their life then you come into a better understanding of why they do what they do when they do it and a lot of times it has nothing to do with the person who they are deep within themselves But it has to do with circumstances and events and how they unfolded at that particular time. So we could judge people off of actions. But I want to warn you, judge not lest ye be judged. Because I guarantee you, if you've been put in the same situation, you might have not done so well. Mm Hmm. You might have not done so well. So be careful when you do that now. Be awful careful. But when I say that you accept people, I don't mean that you accept their actions. I mean that you accept their inner being, that child within there. That child within there who is pure love and who just want to do right and live right and have a good life. And who fell up on hard times. And had to build up a persona, an exterior to meet the world in which it was in. We all start off as innocent little children. And some of us have parents who have done things because they did not love us in the proper way, who have done things that created us to be the way that we are. And so you have defects and you have insecurities and all of these different things 
that manifest themselves in, in what is considered bad actions. You have women who are what they call loose or fast because they didn't have a father figure in their life. And so as they go from man to man, they're looking, they love these men because they want these men to love them, which is accept them. And so they, they go through man. And we could judge them. Sure, we could judge them. But they're simply looking for acceptance. There are people who are on drugs right now who have fell upon hard times. And a lot of people have gotten on drugs after bad relationships because they could not stand being with their self because he or she could not stand being with them. And so they ended up getting on drugs in order to deal, to cope with it. Not that they wanted to be in that condition. Who desires to be in that condition? No, it wasn't desiring to be on drugs that they desired. It was desiring to escape themselves, to escape their reality because they refused to accept themselves. They refused to accept their reality for what it was. And it could be you. It could be you. That is not the acceptance that I'm talking about. You don't have to accept behavior, but what you do need to accept, you need to accept people for who they are and begin to love people back to health. And when I say love, I mean accept people back to health. All problems, generally all problems stem from a lack of self-love, whether that's you being in a, a, an abusive type of relationship, whether that's mentally, physically, or financially, you clearly don't love yourself in the proper way in order for you to be putting up with that shit. Any people who are chronically depressed is simply from a lack of acceptance, either on their part or for someone else. But if you are constantly looking for others to accept you, that is a clear indicator you have not accepted yourself first. Because once you accept yourself, others will accept you. They'll have no choice. They'll have no choice. They'll have no choice. Because you won't accept nothing but the best for yourself. Because you will know yourself inside and out. That's why they say, know thyself. Some people have began to know thyself, but they still don't like thyself. They don't love thyself. The more they know thyself, the more they hate thyself. And it should not be that way. You should begin to know thyself. And as you know thyself, no matter what you began to know, you need to continue to accept yourself. Your problems come from repressing who you truly are and trying to be who the world, who your mama, who your spouse, who your child has said you should be. And therefore you are inorganic. You are now a genetically modified being. And it is only when you accept yourself as you are that you are being organic. That you are being real and authentic. And that is the only way you will be happy is being your true self. You got to peel off of those layers that have been slowly applied on through the years, trying to be what they said you needed to be so that you can gain their acceptance. Trying to be who you said you should be so you can gain your acceptance. You got to reverse that shit. You got to hit reverse. And you need to try to learn who you truly, truly are so you can be who you truly, truly are. Because there is only one you. There's only one you. And while you're out trying to be something that you're not, who is being you? You is needed. You have a purpose. You have a job. Not the you that you created. The you that is really you. And so we need to get to the you that is really you so you can be happy in the skin that you're in. And you won't have to be depressed. You won't have to get drugs. You won't have to get high. 
You won't have to run through man. You won't have to run through all these women. You won't have to do these things. You ain't got to shuck and jive for your mama. You ain't got to hide who you are from your daddy. You won't give a damn. You really won't. Once you accept yourself for who you are, then you will be completely happy with being with yourself for the rest of your life and by yourself for the rest of your life if that's what you have to do. But you will no longer will be satisfied in being a, a, a square peg trying to fit into a round hole. You will no longer put that shit on you. You will stop trying to trim your edges to fit into the mold and the role that they have prepared for you. And that, my friend, is true freedom when you could be who you are and really don't give a damn how they feel about it, no matter who they are. And that is what the first commandment, thou shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. I know y'all thought God was some man up in the sky with a white beard holding a, a, a wand or some shit like that. But no, the kingdom of heaven is within you and God is residing on his throne or her throne within his or her heaven in you. And you have been too busy honoring your mama's God, your, your husband's God, and everybody else's God, and being what they want you to be instead of honoring your God. It says, honor the Lord thy God. And that's how you be happy. But you got to know thy God before you can honor thy God. And you've suppressed your true self for so long that you don't even know who the fuck you really are. You done turned into what he or she wanted you to be. So you don't remember who you really are. You've been so long trying to be someone that can make your mama or your daddy proud. You don't know who you really are. You have been trying to be someone who friends and people would like so you can have friends that you don't know who you really are. And so that means you got to separate yourself, separate yourself from people who you have deemed to love you with that imperfect condition, limited desire kind of love. You have to separate yourself from those people so you can get to know yourself for who you truly are, because it's a funny thing how when you get around them, you automatically fall into that role. You notice that you can't even stop yourself. You can't even be authentic if you want it to. <coughs> And you act differently around different people, depending upon who you're around. You ever had two different personalities with two different people? You know, say you with your mama and your mama wants you to be a certain way. So you act that way when you're with your mama. But when you're with your friends, you act a certain way. But now you got your mama and your friend in the same room and you're stuck. You don't know which one to be. You don't know if you want to be the daughter version of you or the friend version of you. And now you got yourself between a rock and a hard place. That right there lets you know you're not being authentic. You're not being authentic with yourself because there is a you. There is a you that is different from these versions of you. Any version of a thing is a, is, is a lie. Truth has one version and you are the truth. There's only one truth. Any version of truth is a mistruth. And the same thing is true with you. All of the different versions of you, they're just themes. They're personas that you have made, masks that you have made to operate in different environments. But like future say, it's time to take the mask off. We need to look at you as you really are. We need to see you as you really are. But more importantly than that, you need to see you as you really are. So you can know yourself and then accept yourself, which means that you love yourself. That's right. And this is the only way to happiness, people. It's the only way you're going to have a lasting relationship with yourself, with your parents, with your spouse, with your children, with your neighbors, with your people, with your co-workers. You have to have a, a real, authentic 
relationship built off of acceptance. Not only that, but when you go off of acceptance, you can accept who and what people are and judge yourselves accordingly. A lot of us are in relationships and we refuse to love our spouse. We refuse to accept them for who the fuck they are. And so we continue projecting who we want them to be. And we are continuously getting shocked by shit that they're doing. I can't believe. Well, how you didn't know that that was going to happen? It's been happening for the last 10 years. Y'all been together. How you didn't know that was happening? Because you continuously projecting what you want them to be and not looking at what they truly are. You are refusing to accept what is. Mm -hmm. You are refusing to accept what is. Now, once you begin to accept what is, you can judge yourself accordingly. That does not mean that you stay with him or her. Uh, Listen well. Once you accept what and who they are, that does not mean you have to stay with them no matter what they say or do. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you could see them as they truly are and judge yourself accordingly. Because just because we all walking around in human bodies don't mean that we all think the same and act the same. Some people act like snakes. Some people act like tigers. Some people act like turtles. I always say we, we have we have two dogs and we got one that is a bison on Fritz. And what he does, we named him Sammy. What he does is he'll sleep all day and then he'll come out and he'll do like. He'll do like 15 minutes of a flurry and he'll go back in the room by himself. I mean, sometimes he's not sleeping, but he likes to spend a lot of time alone. And then we have another dog who's a, uh, a Yorkshire Terrier. And she's real, real fast. She moves around a lot and does all kinds. I mean, very, very active. Very doesn't like to spend time alone. And see, me and my husband, we always talk about I'm more like the, the bison fresh. I love alone time. I spend a lot of time in contemplation. A lot of time. I'll come out, I'll mingle, and I'll go back in my little cubby hole. And my husband's more like the Yorkshire. He's very active, always moving, always doing things. So I said that to say this, just because we are all in human skin does not mean we have the same personality. And so when you look at someone without the filter of what you desire and you accept what they truly are, then you could judge yourself accordingly. Some of y'all got snakes. Keep fucking biting you. Bite you, bite you, bite you. But you keep projecting some type of lamb or some type of beautiful, some some other shit on top of this person and not really accepting the fact that you got yourself a snake. That don't mean that you have to hate the snake. You need to understand just like you do with the weather and just like you do with dogs, you need to accept the snake for who it is. But just because you know that it's a snake, that means you need to do the things necessary. Get your ass back 50 feet. That's what you need to do. If you're dealing with a lion, then you need to handle yourself accordingly. If you're dealing with a lamb, you need to handle yourself accordingly. If you're dealing with a chicken, you need to know when shit pop off, you're going to be on your own. You feel what I'm saying? You need to know what you're dealing with. But you will never know what you're dealing with as long as you're projecting your desire on top of that person. You need to take your desire out of the picture and look at that person for who and what they truly are. And accept that shit. Accept it. That's right. I know it hurts. You don't want to believe that you married a motherfucking snake. You don't want to believe that your mama is a lion ripping you apart, that your daddy is like a gorilla. You don't want to believe these things. I know. I understand that. But you have to stop projecting what you want and see it for what it is and accept that. That's love. And then love yourself enough To do what needs to be done to protect your integrity, to protect your soul, to protect your body, to protect your mind, to protect your finances. Snakes need to be with other snakes. That's all I'm saying. I know you feel sorry for them. I know you feel, you know, whatever. But again, that's still a manifestation of not loving yourself. You are responsible for self. Nobody else can be responsible for you. You will be with yourself 24-7 for the rest of your life. 
You are responsible for you. They are responsible for they. But do you notice how they look out for them? Yeah, they look out for them. That's right. That's how they got you because they was looking out for them. Why are you still with them is the question. I know why they with you. I know exactly why they with you. The question is, why are you still with them? Who are you looking out for? Is that in your best interest, really? Or is it in their best interest? Are you still loving others more than you love yourself? Because that's not the formula. The formula is love others as you love yourself. But you still loving others more than you love yourself. You still honoring their God that resides within their heaven, that resides within their being and not honoring yours. And you wonder why you're catching hell. You wonder why you feel like you're dying inside. You wonder why you don't want to live no more. You wonder why you don't have any inner G, inner G, inner God, because you've given your God away. You're honoring their energy. And that's why they got the energy to go cheat on your ass. To go be with other people who actually do accept and love themselves. You know, they got a lot of women who wonder why men as well. They got a lot of men and women wondering why their spouse cheats on them with what they consider bottom feeders. Yeah, yeah. You looked at that. Mm hmm. You ever wonder that? What? Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? The same person, the same type of person that this man or woman is trying to get you not to be is the person that they're cheating with. You ever notice that shit? Mm-hmm. You can't wear no shirt that's too low with your titties hanging out. You can't wear no shorts that's too high. Or 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 you can't uh if you a man, um, you know, you 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 can't be a man, you, you got to work. You got to make some money or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the kind of man I want. I don't want no man with no money, a man that can't provide for me. I don't want no woman that look, you know, that's fat. I don't want this and that. And so here you are shucking and jiving, jumping through hoops, trying to be something that you not or trying to keep up with what they want you to be. Meanwhile, they leaving your ass at the house and they down at the corner slow and he in the car with a fat bitch. Mm hmm. Or she cheating on you with a nigga ain't got no job. And you like, wait a minute, something, hold on, something ain't adding up here. And you trying to figure out how is this possible? I thought you didn't like no one that didn't have no job. I thought you didn't like no fat woman. I thought you didn't like light-skinned women, dark-skinned women, light-skinned men, dark-skinned men. You see what I'm saying? And here you is done changed your whole damn self to fit the mold. And now... And now, come to find out, he cheating with that shit that he professed or she professed they didn't want you to be. And you don't understand what's going on, but that's because they never loved you. They only desired you to fulfill a role. You see, the fat bitch, the whore, the dude with no job, they're fulfilling a whole nother role. They're fulfilling a whole nother role. And again, let me just make this clear. When I say fat bitch, I'm not talking about nobody because I'm technically fat myself. You understand what I'm saying? Skinny bitches. Some dudes don't like skinny bitches. You see what I'm saying? So this chick over here eating, trying to get fat and shit, come to find out that he walking through the mall with a skinny bitch. Like, hold on. Wait a minute. I thought you like curves. I thought you like body and thickness. Something to hold on to. You know what I'm saying? Same difference. Same difference. But the point here is... The point here is, is it is a losing battle to continue to try to be what other people want you to be. The happiest you will ever be is when you're being yourself authentically and unapologetically yourself. People will want you to be all kind of different ways to fulfill their agenda. And when they're done with you, then you'll just be left holding the bag. Left holding the bag, confused. What do they call an identity crisis? I don't know who I am. That's what you'll be. So instead of trying to be what your mama, your brother, your sister, your spouse, your neighbor, your friends, the world thinks that you should be. Try peeling back some of those layers and figuring out who you really are. What is it that you really want? What is your will? Now, some of y'all might have a problem trying to figure out who you are. And I understand that because I had to go through this process and I didn't know where to start. I was sitting thinking, oh, my God, how the f I don't know who I am. I'm like so many different people. I really don't know who I am. And I had to really. And I'm going to tell you how I the process that I went to to figuring out who the real me was. 
between all of the characters I had created, who is the real me? What do I really want? What really makes me happy? Not what sounds good and what other people will clap for and say, oh, she's such a good person, such a wonderful person. No, what really makes me happy, whether the rest of the world hates it or not, what makes me happy? <coughs> And you have to, it's a long process. Now, see, what I did was you got to get a piece of paper and write down the things that you think you want. And I say think because we don't want half of the shit we think we want. You write down what you think you want. And then you start like the little children. There's power in the question why. I'm going to say that again. There is power in the question why. Just like I said at the beginning of the video, when somebody says you, they love you, why? You need to ask him. And if they have a reason for loving you, then that's that counterfeit shit. They, if they don't say just because you are who you are, if they say, oh, because you make me feel good or because you, you know, because if, a, if, if they love you because you make them feel good, one day you're not going to make them feel good no more. One day you're not going to feel good enough to make them feel good and you're going to have a motherfucking problem. If they love you because you look good, I want you to know that one day you might not look good no more and you're going to have a motherfucking problem. If they love you because you love them, I want you to know that they are loving you for what you're giving them and not for who you are. And you're going to have a motherfucking problem. So why is very important here. It's not so much about the what, but it's about the why. It's about the intentions behind the what. It's the why behind the what. That's important. So you ask yourself, what is it that I think that I want? And then when you, when you got that down on the paper, then you need to ask yourself why. And then once you got that answer, you need to ask why that. So if I say, um, I want to be married. Now, I want you all to know that I am married. But this is just for the sake of conversation. Let's say I said I want to be married. That's number one. It's one of the first things I want. Then I'd have to ask myself why. Why do I want to be married? And so if I say, well, let me see, I want to be married because I don't want to be alone. So I'll write that down. I don't want to be alone. Then you must ask yourself again, why? Okay, let's see. Why don't I want to be alone? Hmm. Hmm. And you see, it's very time consuming because you have to go back through the doors that you came through to get where you are. So then you figure out that you don't want to be alone because... Because you feel vulnerable in this big old world. <clears throat> and then once you get that answer, you got to ask yourself, well, well, why? Why do I feel vulnerable in this big old world? And so you sit and you contemplate that for a while. And you might come up with the fact that you feel vulnerable in this big bad world because it seems like everyone who you loved did you bad. Turned around and hurt you in some kind of way, shape or form because... You know, that's why. That's why. You feel vulnerable because everyone you love hurt you and you feel defenseless. So then you got to ask yourself, why? Why do you feel defenseless? Well, it may be because you're a woman and you don't feel like you have enough strength. Or it may be because you feel like you haven't had enough education. Or, or it may be because you feel like uh, you don't have enough resources. And if that's the case, you write that down and then you ask yourself why and you keep going until you can't ask why anymore and you will get to the root of it. And that is how you began to know yourself. You got to talk to yourself. You got to discuss things with yourself because you are kind of in autopilot right now. You're doing shit and you do not even know why. You don't know why. And so you've got to really begin to talk to, your, to yourself and go through the corridors of your mind and discover the intentions behind even your very own actions. Why is so important? Why is the question that gets you to knowing yourself? If you're not asking yourself why, then I guarantee you that you do not know yourself. Even living with yourself 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, even living with yourself, that doesn't mean you know yourself. 
That does not mean you know yourself. Because as I said, you operate in autopilot. You make decisions in a moment's time, and those decisions last for a lifetime. You set up the wall, and you never go back to tear it down. And this is the mask. These are the characters that you create to operate in this world. And those are not you. They're versions of you. There's only one true you. And you've got to knock the walls down. And the hammer that you use is why. That's how. So, thank you all for tuning in. I enjoyed talking to you all. I'm going to look down my comments just for a brief moment and see if I have anything um, that I may possibly need to answer. I see already there's quite a bit of affirmations here. Um, let's see. Hi, Bernadette. I see that you got on here. Chantress Robinson. Good to see you here. Let's see. Diamond says, let me try to go from the top. Well, let's see. For better or worse, Saba L says, right, she is amazing. She is speaking my thoughts. Diamond says, Saba says, my pastor. <laughs> Accepting now and forever. A lot of affirmations. Thank you guys for all the love. I appreciate that. I really do. This is food for self, Diamond said. Yes, very much so. Now I see why Saba L hasn't cursed me out yet. He's got a solid base. <laughs> Don't judge her for the words she may need to use to hit the point. Also, you can relate. I learned how to do that this year. A lot of people I thought loved me. Yeah, and you know, that's that's sad. Um, it's always hard to go through that um, because we we do think that they love us. But again, that is because we don't truly uh, understand uh, what love, real love is. And so the good news is that hopefully after uh, listening to this, that you have more of a, a idea of what real love is. And so it won't come as a shock to you um, when someone is not actually in love with you, which means they accept you. They're in acceptance of who you are. And so when you lose them, um, uh, the ones who uh, love you based off of their desire, their need, uh, when you lose them, you don't, you don't feel uh, as bad because you, you accept life and the situation for what it is. And you're not trying to project what you want, which is for them to accept you. But you're actually looking for what you're looking at it as it truly is, which is the fact that they don't accept you. Because if they did, they wouldn't be continuously um, doing you the way that they do. And they would have never left. You can't, you can't, you can't. Uh, again, the lower fessor, the lower, the lower form of love is a possessive form of love. Just like the flower on the roadside, we want to possess the flower. You know, we want to possess people because we want to, uh, them to fulfill our agenda. And we can't uh, impose our will upon it or them unless we possess them. You see, so that is always a market sign that someone is in the lower form of love um, because um, when you truly love someone or accept someone uh, they don't have to be in your life in that way uh, it's okay it's okay if they're not it's okay because you accept yourself and when you truly accept yourself for who you are then you are you are self-sustaining you are a self-sustaining being, and you don't need anyone else to complete you. You're already complete. You see what I'm saying? So, let's see what else we got. The yin and yang of you. That's right. Need both sides. And, you know, we don't like to try to, we try to repress the, the, the what we consider the negative aspect of ourself. But, um. You need both sides to, to be whole, you know, and that's what it means to be holy. You need both sides. And as long as you're suppressing one side, uh, you're doomed for failure because it's going to continue to pop its head up in your life 
but it's going to pop its head up in negative ways. Once you acknowledge it um, for what it is, then you can begin to deal with it. Like they say about alcoholics and, and, and anything else, it's only until you acknowledge that there is a problem and what the problem is can you treat it properly. And we don't even know we have a problem, much, net, much less acknowledging it or getting to the root of it, you know. So, let's see. This is so good. Thank you. I'm glad you think so. You're building your house on a fault. Exactly. Exactly. Let's see. Much information. Thank you for the knowledge. This is very good. Stephanie Bay, thank you for joining in. Joel Watson, thank you for joining in. Good affirmations. Thank you for this food. You're most welcome, Miss Diamond. Distance and mission. Mm -hmm. Gracias. Sandri Hernandez Bay. I like that she speaks my language. Well, frequency, what, what, what they say, your vibe is your tribe. <laughs> we vibe right. We all vibe on the same frequency or you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. There are no accidents. There are no coincidences. There's only synchronicities. Divine appointments. Sis got a black belt and kicking real shit. <laughs> I just want to sit down with a cup and close my eyes while listening to her in a dark room. That's a good idea. And you know, that's why a lot of times I do audios, because when you do when you do videos, it, it takes away from the message. People are so busy looking uh, in the background. They're looking at how you're moving and, and, and their eyes are, are taking some of the attention away. And so I do the audios because I want your mind to formulate its own pictures, because Whatever your mind creates, it remembers better. It re it's the difference between watching a movie and reading a book. Somehow, we don't care to read, but reading a book is always more impactful than watching a movie. You will remember it. Why? Because the pictures that are in your mind were created by your mind. So they're perfect for you. Perfect for you. And so I like to do these audios so that you can formulate the pictures within your own mind and the pictures are perfect for you. And they conveyed the idea perfectly and you remembered them and therefore they help you in your life and it lasts longer. So totally agree with that. It wouldn't be a bad idea in a dark room. Come out like, whoa, new man. That's right. I can never listen to you with a blunt or a molly. <laughs> Space galactic high. <laughs> well, I don't know about the molly, but uh, <laughs> you could definitely listen with a blunt. It wouldn't be that bad, believe it or not. <laughs> I've done it before back in the day. But anyway, um, the voice holds much power. Thank you. Hear this super sober. Yeah. E e either way, you get the message. It soaks in because these these uh, these words are more like codes that unlock things within you. Even if you're not paying attention at the deepest level that, you know, one possibly should be paying attention, you're still getting something out of it because um, just the vibration itself is un unlocking things within you. And so you, you can't help but to be changed in some kind of way. And that's why I say everything uh, that you that you hear, that you see, that you touch is food. And so you have to discern, is it good nourishment or not? You know, so you have to be mindful of um, what you expose your eyes and your ears to, you know, because it's, it's unlocking and locking shit all the while, regardless of whether you realize it or not. I see. Islam, I shall return. Great session. So very unexpected. Carolyn says, Yas. Continue to accept yourself when you do not. You are now a genetically modified being. Facts. Facts. Truth has one version. Any version of something is a lie. That is a fact. Planting new growth. Mr. Hill, hi. So glad you tuned in. And Talk to you in a while. Mr. Hill says, thank you. I needed this mirror. Yep, that's why you're here. Everyone here needed this or you would not be here right now. 
Again, there are no accidents. There are no coincidences. There's only divine appointments. And so you're here because this is your frequency. You are vibing with your tribe. And uh, this information was information you needed so you can so you can produce an out formation. You know, it goes in and out. It comes to you and through you is how it works. I wish I could pronounce your name. Ostinaco says, I am involved with a snake. Well, well, if you are involved with a snake, then you, um, I see that you've accepted that fact or you wouldn't have articulated that on here. So you, you've got the first step down. Uh, now you just need to decide um, how you are going to conduct yourself with and around this snake and um, to what limits you're willing to go. Uh, uh, with the snake that you're involved with, not not to say that you can you have to leave your snake. It's not to say that people have pet snakes all the time, <laughs> but you need to know how to handle your snake. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not telling anybody to leave their spouse. I'm not telling anybody to do any of those things. But what I am telling you is, is you need to know what you're dealing with so you can know how to conduct yourself with that person, place, or thing. So we have. It says, Joey says, so if she a hoe, she a hoe, live with it. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, Joey Bean. <laughs> Energy. Let's see. Speak the truth, Queen Lionel Collins. Thank you for joining in. Kevin Williams. You had this conversation last night, Kev. And, you know, that's the crazy thing about frequency, you know, because, and as I said, when you're on the same frequency, you're like swimming in the same spirit. You're swimming in the same stream. So you will hear something from, uh, you know, one place. And it's like everywhere you turn, you'll be hearing um, people or, or things talking about the same subject. And it's because all of the people in your frequency are literally in the same stream of energy and they're drinking in the same thoughts. They're drinking in the same uh, information and waveform. And we're we're all expressing it differently. You know, it's like um, it's like the man injects seed within the mother, but the mother gives that seed expression, gives it a body uh, to express itself. And in the same way, we receive information from the ether, but we give it a body in this external world. We give it expression, you know, so we're all receiving the same seed for all intents and purposes. We're all, um, having, uh, spiritual intercourse with the same spirit per se. If you can grasp that, what I just said, without going into a whole carnal, uh, mind type thing but anyway Chantress says I love this I love you Chantress Diana Williams thank you for joining in says thank you Crystal I truly needed this and I need y'all I need all of y'all very very much because y'all are all part of me and I love all of y'all and I accept you however you are Love this very powerful message. Gerald Jones, thank you for joining in. Gerald says that. Jewel Watson, thank you, Jewel, for joining in. I needed this. Was in a 15-year marriage. Left two weeks ago. Moved to another state. Found out I didn't love myself as much as I thought. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that usually comes as a shocker to people because most of the people who don't love themselves are always the one who say they love themselves. They look like they love themselves, but it's a compensation thing. You know, people overcompensate. Just like I said in another video, the people who look the happiest are usually the most depressed people, you know, and the people who look the most extroverted are usually the most introverted people. Um, and so the people who really believe that they love themselves are usually the people who really don't, you know, and so it does come as a shock, um, to the most of us uh, when we really come to know ourselves. Chantra says, I needed this. Charlene Lestrap Ledoux. Hi, sweetie. Hometown. She says, loved it. I see where a lot of pain came from, Mr. Hill says. Yes, yes. Ka Adapt Alley Day says, love don't love no one. Well, 
you know, you're going to have to, um, I, I, I would implore you to go back and watch the beginning of this video because we, we um, are giving love a bad rep. And so people are being afraid of love. And it is not love. When most people say love, it's not true love that they're talking about. And so in this video, I, I, or this audio rather, I pretty much break down the difference between uh, fake love and real love. Because the fake falls off and people get hurt. And they say shit like love don't love nobody. Um, <clears throat> but it wasn't love uh, that hurt you. It was people who don't know how to love. Uh, that hurts you, you know, and so I don't want you to wall yourself off from true love, true acceptance, because that's where heaven is. That's where happiness is. That's where salvation and peace and joy is. That's literally where everything good in life is, is through real love, which is acceptance. That's all we all want is acceptance. Everything we do is designed to get people to accept us, whether it's, uh, like I said, a spouse, a mother, friends, co-workers, whatever it is to get people to accept us and uh, the only thing needful is for you to accept yourself and all the rest of that shit will follow you know and the good book puts it this way seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you where is heaven if you listen to me you know that heaven is within if you read the Bible correctly, you know that heaven is within if you study science and biology correctly you know that heaven is within so seek ye first, seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, which is within you. And all these things shall be added unto you. How many of these things? A few? No. A couple? Several? All these things shall be added unto you. So that verse is basically telling you, you need to seek yourself. You need to seek your true self that resides within the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, your righteousness. And once you love self properly in true love, all of that rest of that shit will be added unto you. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. And you don't think nothing of yourself. And so you keep you keep attracting in your life people that also think nothing of you. So. Kevin Williams says, so what do you feel about titles like soulmate and best friend if they can't tell you why? If they can't tell you why they love you, then I see that as a good thing. Because usually when people can tell you why they love you. Then whatever they tell you, if you stop being or doing that, they will no longer love you anymore. People who truly love you for love's sake, people who accept you for acceptance sake, usually have no reason. It's like, um, I don't know, why do I like a flower? Why do I like flowers? I like flowers because they're beautiful, they smell good, and, and, and they just are what they are. I like them because they are what they are. I mean, that's, I really don't have a reason. I don't like them because they make my house look beautiful because that's not love. That's not really love. I just love them because they are what they are. And so when people love you because you just are what you are, then they usually don't have a good reason why they love you because they don't have an agenda for loving you. It's not because they want security. It's not because they don't want to be alone. It's not because that's what, you know, you're supposed to do is get married. There's no because. I just love you, period. It's like a mama. And you, and you know, you ask your mama, mama, why do you love me? If she gives you a reason, then that to me, that seems a little scary. If I ask my mama, mama, or my daddy, why do you love me? And they say some shit like, you know, because you're a good kid. I would feel fucked up because that means if I if I turn into a bad kid, then I would lose the love of my mother. But when my mother says, I love you because you're mine or I love you because you are who you are, then I know I will never stop being me. So she'll always love me. I know that I will always be hers. I was hers before I came out the belly. I'll always be hers, even after I die. So she will always love me. You see what I'm saying? Lee Darius, thank you for joining in. King Steve, Steve Green, what's up? Thank you for joining in. Let's see. Lee says, thanks for opening my mind so much. I didn't know. No problem. And if you caught this, this audio in the middle, please, I implore you again to go back and check out the beginning. Uh, 
ju- just to get a good basis because this information, I swear, is just really, really, really so important uh, in terms of how you conduct yourself through life and with people and building relationships. Because, again, relationships are just that they're ships, they're vehicles that take you places and you get in the wrong relationship and that motherfucker will drive you straight to hell. You feel what I'm saying? And a lot of people relationship docked in hell and they don't know how to get back on the ship and get out. And that is what this is about is how to build a relationship with yourself. You don't need anybody else. Build a relationship with yourself and that ship will get you to heaven. That ship will get you to happiness and joy and peace and some sense of purpose in life. You don't need anybody else. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things shall be added unto you. And again, heaven is within you. So, Kevin says collective consciousness. Correct. Okay, well, I've just about ran through all of the comments here. I thank you so much for joining in and listening in to me. Uh, Share if you care, if you feel led to. If not, it doesn't matter because those who this is meant for will get it guaranteed. Um, So I love you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. And um, remember, you are more than you know. You are more than you know. And take the time out today to get to know yourself. Really get to know yourself. And accepting yourself. And all of your dirty. When you go through the process, you're probably going to cry. You're probably going to have some some low moments. You're going to have to, you know, it's rough. It's a rough. It might not be a day when you start the process. You don't want to have to go to work later on that day because it takes, it takes a lot of energy to do this work, to do this process. But it is worth it. It's very much worth it, you know. So, so you know, take the time out today to really... Begin to ask yourself why, why, why um, about different things in your life and and, and talk to yourself and get to know yourself a little better. And no matter what the answers are, digest that, accept that, and judge yourself accordingly. Now, I want y'all to know that I love y'all. And by love, that means I, that doesn't mean I desire you for any purpose because I don't. I don't desire you for any purpose. I accept you for who and what you are. Why? Because you are mine. You are mine and I am yours. I am in you as you are in me. And for that reason and that reason alone, I love all of y'all. And y'all are more than what you know. Begin to use. Begin to use your tools. And don't be afraid. Have a good day.